right, so starting this lesson one off, we start with the most basic question, which is what is Power Automate? And so when we talk about this platform, really we're talking about a cloud-based workflow automation tool. This did used to be called Microsoft Flow. Microsoft did change the name of it maybe about two years ago to Power Automate. They wanted everything to be within the Power platform. You gotta love how they like to be cheeky sometimes. But throughout this course, you might hear me use a few of these different terms, workflow, flow, power automation, if I'm feeling rambunctious, process, all of these things really just mean the same thing. And at the end of the day, what that is, is a chain of coordinated actions or commands that we're taking on a given system. And so a lot of times when you talk about automation tools, it might just be automating within a single system, or if you're familiar with like VBA on Excel, you're automating things within that Excel file. In this case, Power Automate not only provides connectors for everything within Microsoft, but it also provides connectors for thousands of different third-party services and APIs that you could then also integrate with your Microsoft-related data or functionality. What's great too is that you can make these things as simple or as complex as you need them to be. This is great for individuals who just want to simplify maybe their own workflows or actions that they need to take on maybe a daily, weekly, monthly basis, or it could scale to support enterprise use cases and where you have hundreds or thousands of interactions happening and all needing to be supported. Power Automate really can scale either which way to support both use cases, which really makes it useful at the individual or the enterprise level. It also comes out of the box with a Microsoft or Office 365 subscription. There are some premium features that I'll hint at and talk to later, but generally speaking, everything in this course will be on the basic subscription, which means as long as you just have a Office subscription, you should be able to build along with this. And so there are a few different types of Power Automate flows. Again, just showing how there can be a few ways we refer to these. But there are three types of cloud flows, which is the main domain, if you will, of them. So there's cloud automated flows. A great example of this is something that's happening in one of those systems. It's an event, really, that is creating this workflow to run. So when we receive an email, then send the attachments over to OneDrive. That's an example of the automated cloud flow. We have instant flows, so these are more based on action, right? So if I press a button, that could be on your phone or even from online if you run the flow. You could also have instantaneous things such as for a selected message from Teams or for a selected email, perform an action. That is an example of an instant cloud flow. The third one then, pretty self-explanatory, is a scheduled flow. And so these are ones that you can program pretty robustly to either be down to, say, every hour, maybe you need it every day, every other Monday, Wednesday of the week. All of that is really this kind of logic of how you can create a scheduled cloud flow. Now, there is another section of Power Automate that we're really not going to cover in this course just because there's so much to each of these in their own right. But still, just to summarize them, there are desktop RPA flows. And so where cloud flows are all running on the connectors that are available through the online kind of services, desktop RPA flows are really more meant to be connecting to mechanisms or files or components that are on a machine. So this can be your own local machine. Maybe you want to open up a web page and scrape information off of it. Or at, again, at a more scalable situation, you might have these running on a virtual machine and processing files or receiving PDFs and sending them somewhere else. All of these are things more running off of CPUs that are really on your computer at the end of the day. There is a brand new feature that is really cool now with the release of ChatGPT and everything on that. So this describe to design is a little early on and still needs some work to really get scaling, but maybe for a personal use case, it is awesome that you can kind of just feed this describe to design chat dialogue and it'll be able to generate a Power Automate flow for you. The final piece, which isn't so much a flow, but at the end of the day, it is still very relevant. This is Process Advisor. You can actually feed this a flow, or you can feed this a manual process, maybe Visio, things of that sort. And it will be able to process and kind of give you an understanding of how optimal that flow or process runs and try to provide recommendations on how you can reduce it. And so we're talking about a flow at a high level, but 
at its core, and again, we will get into this in later videos, but just to explain the, the general ideology of what a cloud flow is, there's really three domains of things that are in a flow. The first one is a trigger, and so every flow needs some type of trigger to run. So for the automated side of things, you can think of when an email is received or when a file is updated, when a form is submitted, right? All of these things are kind of these event-based ideas that are causing a flow to then run based on that happening. You could think of the scheduled trigger as well. That would be in this case, or if I press a button, all of those are examples of an event happening to trigger the flow. The next idea that we'll talk about and we'll be using all throughout this course is of course actions. And so if you think of a flow maybe as 1% a trigger, it's going to be 99% actions and logic that you would be performing. And so everything in a flow is sequential. So therefore an action or anything that happens below, you know, a predecessor can actually get information from the item above. So for in this case, when we receive an email, we then want to update SharePoint or when a file is updated, send an email to notify someone. All of those are behaviors that can happen because the trigger can pass along information to the action and then the action, when it happens, can also pass along information to its predator, uh, to the actions that come along after it. And then of course, third is conditional logic. This is really the idea that we can put in custom logic to look at data, again, coming from the trigger, coming from the action, and then be able to perform various mechanisms of logic. So you could, of course, think of sending 100 emails rather than just sending one. We could loop and send 100 if a given condition exists. Hopefully someone's not just sending 100 emails blindly. There is always a chance of that, but with great power comes great responsibility. And so just to touch on this piece before we finish this first lesson video, we wanted to talk to connectors. And so we talk about connectors constantly through all of these courses because they are the underlying infrastructure, if you really think about it, for how Power Automate works. All triggers, all actions are based in a connector. And so when we talk about connectors, if we really want to give it a different way of thinking about it, a connector is really just a wrapper for some type of system or an API, if you're familiar with APIs, to just make Power Automate have a standardized approach to working against data. And so that means a user can receive data, no matter what that data is, they can work with it in a standard way, which is JSON, and then be able to send that data back all through the connector without having to actually understand how to program against an API or a SOAP endpoint or anything of that sort. There is a distinction that I do want to call out too. Again, I mentioned it earlier, this idea of basic versus premium connectors. And so what comes out of the box with most subscriptions is access to basic connectors. And what that means is pretty much any Microsoft connector, especially ones Outlook, SharePoint, things of that sort, all of those will be able to be accessed easily without having to add additional licensing. But if you want to look at some of the more premium features or premium services, that's where premium connectors, and you'll see these classified in the portal as we go through it, these are things such as SQL, Dataverse, SAP, maybe you're connecting to an on-prem system. All of those need to be facilitated through what is a premium license then. All right, that covers our overview of Power Automate. Now let's drop the slides and jump into the editor and the portal and start talking through with real life examples.